So first of all, thank you very much for, for joining. Uh, I got the chat right open next to me. So hopefully at the end of this talk, we're gonna have a couple of more minutes to go through your questions. And um, with that, um, yeah, warm welcome uh, to the rest of the world. Um, my name is Patrick and I'm gonna talk about Apache Streampipes, um, flexible industrial IoT management. So first of all, who am I and how did, did I get here? Um, I'm basically a researcher by day and work at a German um, company, it's called FZI, and I love open source. And that's what I do most of the time um, on the other time. Um, last year at the ApacheCon in Las Vegas, um, we had a talk um, by Dominic, which who is here. And um, it was a talk about Streampipes itself, but we weren't at the um, one of the Apache projects uh, at that time. And uh, then we decided, okay, the community is really cool, and we really enjoyed um, the, the new the new boost that we experienced um, through through other projects such as PLC4X and IoTDB. And so we we said, okay, hey, let's let's try it and, and join the incubator. And that's what we basically did last year in. In November, um, we joined the incubator with uh, Streampipes. And uh, besides being a PPMC member of Apache Streampipes, I really love GIFs. And um, for those of you um, who want to yeah, tag me in, in their tweets, uh, those are the, the, the handles. So taking a look at the agenda for today, um, first of all, I want to give a brief uh, overview of the landscape, of some motivations and backgrounds. Um, related to industrial IoT and factory 4.0. Um, then some basics about stream pipes, like stream pipes 101, including a little demo um, to just get you sorted what, what it's like. And then diving a little bit deeper um, technically, um, what's, what's going on behind the UI under the hood? How is everything working together? And uh, then I wanna focus on um, the, the way of how uh, new components, how new algorithms can be introduced to, to Streampipes by using our software development kit. And uh, finally, I want to conclude by showing our roadmap and how every one of you could uh, contribute in the future. So looking at a typical industrial IoT factory 4.0 scenario, we, we see that there a lot of things going on there. So basically there are data streams everywhere. When when looking at this uh, small picture, we see um, robots that are doing a pick and place um, operation. We see machines that are maybe welding some parts together or cameras that are analyzing uh, pictures or um, their, their light sensors um, that um, produce certain Boolean values, and of course, there might be some environmental data such as temperatures, humidities, etc., that is uh, going on on a, on a shop floor level. And um, from this kind of heterogeneous uh, data um, on, on the shop floor level, um, more heterogeneity is basically added um, when it comes to the use protocols. When it comes to the use protocols uh, such as ROS, MTDT, Modbus or, or PLC for X. And PLC for X. I hope everything's okay with the camera. I got some notes that maybe the camera is kind of shaky. Um, maybe someone can, can write in the chat. If not, I just continue and hopefully everything's going to sort out. Okay, and um, with that, with that kind of heterogeneity on the on the shop floor level, um, there are luckily um, some some great universal protocols um, such as PLC for X that makes life a little bit more easier by by having this kind of universal control plane in order to access certain protocols such as Modbus or PLC. Um, however, 
collecting um, like all of them is, is not quite intuitive and is still like a major challenge to, to bridge like the gap from the initial um, from the initial uh, machine um, to a harmonized format to, to an analytics framework. And that's where Streampipes basically sits on top as an industrial IoT toolbox for domain experts that allows to connect to these individual protocols really easy, easily in an intuitive way, um, reusing, um, exemplified here, certain um, other um, universal protocols such as PLC4X in order to, to get the data out of the machines in order to bridge that first mile and then um, like do fancy stuff, analytics uh, stuff with the, with the data itself. So now that you've got a brief introduction about the motivation, um, let's talk about Streampipes 101. So what is Streampipes actually? Um, Streampipes, we, we have this kind of mission statement um, and we say it's an open source industrial toolbox that enables uh, the non-technical users um, without the IT skills um, to connect, analyze and exploit the IoT data streams. And when I say and talk about toolbox, um, I mean various parts of it. So I'm going to go through like each of the individual um, parts here, um, starting by connect, which is our um, adapt our marketplace in order to easily connect the um, heterogeneous data sources. And we once the, the data is in the, in the system, um, we got the pipeline editor with an extensible set of um, algorithms and, and basically ranging from simple filters to more advanced algorithms, even wrapping uh, machine learning models itself. Then we got a live dashboard in order to, to quickly get an overview of what's going on. Um, and recently, um, with we've, we've just been working on the on the next release. We got a better version coming up of a data explorer, which is more uh, steered towards historical data analysis, uh, analysis um, which is in, in our experience quite um, uh, a good way to to explore what was going on like the last couple of um, of minutes ago. And uh, then we got the notifications, which is um, an internal sync where we can notify um, base or, or throw notifications based on, on certain um, events that are uh, modeled with an analytical pipeline. So how does it work? Um, looking at the really high level, um, it's more or less four steps. So first of all, um, you connect your IoT data sources. Um, therefore, we, we got the, the mentioned IoT um, adapter uh, marketplace currently with more than 30 adapters. Um, once uh, the data is connected to the system, um, we can switch over to the pipeline editor, which you see here in that picture, and leverage um, our reusable data processes and sync, uh, syncs. Um, currently, there are more than 100 uh, so called pipeline elements ready to use and uh, deploy and execute it more or less wherever you want. Um, so we got uh, Docker images for um, X86 um, architectures as well as ARM architectures. You can run it on Linux, on Windows, on, on, on Mac OS, and uh, we got uh, Helm charts for Kubernetes deployment as well. And um, more important, um, it's, it's point four, where we see um, where, where Streampipes um, shines at this point um, is realizing use cases. And when talking about use cases, we've experienced in the community and throughout our work, um, we've experienced um, more or less these kind of four categories in, in use cases. So first of all, like uh, there's the continuous asset monitoring. So we only want to, to get a brief overview of what's going on while looking at this uh, at the dashboard and, and see the current state of a machine. Um, so this must not really be a, um, a deep analytical use case it's more or less to get this um, sort of real-time experience um, what's the current state of the machine then um, comes the kpi analytics uh, side so um, we don't really are interested in the raw um, raw um, metrics itself but we want to get the relevant production or asset kpis um, out of the system by using um, by using one of the pipeline elements in order to calculate what's really relevant um, 
for you to to get a good overview of um, how healthy your current production is running. Um, then um, coming more to the advanced analytics sides, um, where we see stream pipes um, used uh, quite heavily in the community um, as the training data collection. So for that, um, like pre-processing um, the raw data coming from the machines is always yeah, a quite uh, intense task to do. And with stream pipes and the newly introduced um, um, or upcoming and the 0 0.67 release um, data explorer, you can really easily connect um, to your machine, pre-process your data and store it in the data lake and export it as a CSV um, to, to build up this kind of training data repository quite easily. And um, last but not least, um, you can use stream pipes for, for process and product quality inspection, either by um, using, um, let's, let's say, complex event processing rules, like um, a certain threshold is, is higher, is exceeded within the last couple of minutes. And um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you can quite easily wrap a machine learning model um, in a data processor and apply it on, on real and live uh, data coming. So let's look at the pipeline editor and the certain types of pipeline elements that we got. Um, so it all starts once your data is connected with a data stream and a data stream um, is an audit sequence of event provided by Streampipes Connect, the adapter marketplace I was talking about. Um, in order to, to access the data from the industrial event source, which could be a universal robot uh, via the ROS operating system. Um, then there are data processes. Um, they apply a configurable function um, on one or more input streams, like uh, transforming, enriching, filtering, etc., and produces an output event stream again. And lastly, we end the, um, the graph with the data sinks, um, which mark the end of a pipeline, and they either forward an event uh, input stream to an internal sink. I was talking about, for example, the live dashboard or the historic um, data explorer, or any third party um, sinks as well. So you could forward it to Kafka, to IoTDB, to ROS, etc. So um, here you see um, a couple of more screenshots about the um, IoT toolbox complementing our pipeline editor. And um, with that, I would switch over to give you a brief overview of how stream pipes work. And here, hopefully everyone sees it. Um, stream pipes is running currently on my MacBook. Let's log in first. And uh, on the home screen, you're provided with a brief overview of what's currently happening within Streampipe. So we see that there are actually two pipelines already running. Um, we got 81 um, pipeline elements installed. And we got um, yeah, a, a brief description about the, the various components that we're using. So um, to get started, let's switch over to Connect. Um, which is the adapter marketplace I was mentioning. And here you see we've got a, a huge variety of different protocols and, and um, ways uh, of how we could connect to, to certain uh, data endpoints. So there's Kafka, Pulsar, um, there's also HTTP streams, um, there's MQTT, some specific protocols uh, such as NetU, or a PSC for X, of course. And for the demo, I'm gonna switch over to a data simulator because I don't have a machine uh, running right now, but um, the steps of how to connect to, to a certain asset is more or less the same. So first of all, you would pr be provided with a, a certain dialogue to, to set up, um, for example, the connections to your um, MQTT endpoint or to your uh, PLC. Here we just specify um, the event rate. So every second we want to um, produce a, a flow rate sensor event. Then what you see here is that the system guesses the schema. So it picks up certain events from the event stream and provides a user with a, with a short overview of um, the potential schema. And it lets 
the user refined this kind of schema. So here we detected uh, these various event fields. Um, it also detected that we've got a timestamp in the event as well. And for example, the temperature event here, um, we know that it's a degree Celsius um, and we could right now configure it to switch from um, decrease decrease Celsius um, to another unit, for example, decree Fahrenheit right in the in the connect instance. So without any uh, kind of programming involved, we could easily transform these kind of units. Then we give the adapter a name, low rate Apache con and start it. So this, this kind of configuration is sent to the connect uh, worker instance. Um, which is configured in the background and um, it connects uh, to this kind of industrial asset here. It's only simulated and presents the user with a live information about uh, the data currently flowing in the system. And with that, we could easily switch over to the pipeline editor where we've got um, the overview of um, various already um, existing adapters um, and we can use ours, just drag and drop it into the canvas and use any kind of um, yeah, data processor that is already available uh, to us. So let's say we're interested in just basically filtering towards a certain threshold so we can use a numerical filter, um, connect these elements and configure the numerical filter processor. So we want to filter, for example, the mass flow, which should be higher than a certain threshold, let's say three, and save it. So now this element is configured, and now we're not interested in anything further. So we just want to see the live output. So we use the dashboard sync, connect it again, give it a name, and save the pipeline. Also give the pipeline a name. And start it. So now um, the description of the pipeline itself is distributed to the various components that were involved. Um, so for example, here, the numerical filter and the dashboard sync. So we could switch over to the live dashboard you see here an overview of already running pipelines that are uh, pre-configured by me um, beforehand. Um, so we can use that dashboard here. Let's say edit and add a new visualization on the Apache pipeline, demo one. Let's say table, Let's just say here we wanna see the, the mass flow and the timestamp, create. So now we should only see the, um, the mass flow values that are above our threshold and save it. Um, I was talking about the, the new beta feature that is upcoming. So um, we got the data explorer. Um, so therefore we can browse back in, the, in history and see what was um, going on like a couple of minutes ago. So therefore I set up a pipeline also um, with the same values. And as you can see here, um, it's like the last 15 minutes, we get this overview. We can like zoom in to detect certain patterns. Maybe we can hover over the individual data points and just get a get a better understanding of, of what's what's uh, really going on in the system. Okay, with that I would like to switch back and come to the technical deep dive. So. Streampipe's architecture is more than just a web application. So um, we always describe it as this kind of microservice architectural approach. So um, starting from the data source itself, we saw that we could easily connect um, various heterogeneous protocols via um, Streampipe's connect adapters. So basically every connector itself, uh, they can be bundled together and run in, in Docker containers and they can be geo-distributed to, to places uh, right at the edge, close to the data source itself, where we can harmonize the data, pre-process it, 
etc. Um, on the next layer, um, we get our um, universal transport layer or message broker, which is ex uh, exchangeable. So for that, we mostly uh, rely on um, Apache Kafka, but we could switch it to um, JMS or MQTT within uh, settings in, in the UI. The next kind of layer is the uh, pipeline element microservice uh, layer. Um, here we see the individual um, algorithms or, or things here um, that could run um, on a single standalone instance, but we also got wrappers for um, like frameworks such as uh, Apache Flink, where you can really scale out this kind of data processing. And um, lastly, coming uh, more towards the UI, we got the pipeline management, which is the core of Streampipes, where everything um, runs together, service registration, service discovery, etc. So um, let's look at a basic pipeline. So here we got an industrial event source. Um, it's um, just a machine here producing a temperature event. Um, it says um, 30, uh, 73.5 uh, double value. So what we want to do is um, access that kind of um, that kind of events via MQTT, um, setting up a Streamlabs Connect instance via um, um, Connect then then hook it up to a filter as we did before, um, setting a threshold and uh, pipeline, it, um, pipeline it to a dashboard or a data lake thing. So what's really going on here in the, um, in the connect worker, which is a Docker container, is um, that for, for every instance, we get a description. So for example, here, um, the temperature value itself um, has a has a unit here in degrees Celsius. Um, we get information about the event schema, about data types such as double, or um, user provided configurations such as um, the IP, the port, or a certain topic um, to connect to. And this kind of um, this kind of information, this kind of meta information, is then um, sent via a post request to the certain instance um, where the connect worker is running. And then a new adapter thread is instantiated here for MQTT. And um, within the payload of this um, post request, we have this kind of information about the user configurations in order to configure um, the MQTT adapter and what we call the event grounding which are information about the transport layer, such as what kind of protocol we are using internally here, Kafka, um, what kind of format uh, we're using for the events, where Kafka uh, can be reached and what kind of output topic should be used. Because then in the next step, um, when we connect it to, let's say the numerical filter, we also get this kind of description layer around this um, processing function. So here we got user configurations, um, such as the threshold, what kind of operator, so um, um, greater than or a property, um, such as the event field we, we want to uh, filter, uh, selected by a user. Um, we model the certain output strategies, what is, kind, what is produced by this numerical filter instance afterwards. So here, let's say we want to keep the input schema and don't append it or just customize it. Um, then we got stream requirements. So each of the processing functions do have stream requirements. So here, in order for the numerical filter to work, we need at least one field um, that has a numerical, uh, numerical value in it. And of course, we get information about um, our transport layer, such as um, what kind of um, formats and protocols are supported here. For example, JSON or Thrift to support it as well as Kafka or MQDT supported by that instance as well. And here, um, same again, we get um, a post request um, with a certain payload to that kind of um, uh, data processor that is hosting the numerical filter um, function. And um, we, we send the, the provided user configs as well as the information about the event grounding and the input and output topics. So lastly, for the sinks, um, here the dashboard and data lake sync, 
it uh, happens exactly the same. So we send the post request, uh, request with a payload. And here we see that um, for the runtime we're using, um, we start just two individual um, threads for each of the um, provided things. So now one can ask, um, why do we need such a description layer? Um, we use it for, for user guidance because uh, we're dealing with the uh, domain experts and, and, and non-technical people, and we want to make it as easy, as convenient as, as possible. Um, so we use that kind of information to support the user throughout the pipeline modeling process. Um, we want to prevent um, the user from not um, connecting non-compatible elements. So when talking about the stream requirements, for example, um, our numerical filter, as a requirement that it needs at least one numerical um, field uh, in, in the input event stream. And um, so if we would not have this kind of um, compatibility check, we would uh, run in certain situations that um, would lead to invalid uh, connections that we want to fetch um, eagerly and provide the user with direct feedback. So we can see here in the screenshot um, a flow rate uh, input data stream and uh, a Boolean processor that um, that counts every change from true to false. And, and now the flow rate data stream does not have, does not provide uh, a Boolean event field. So only numeric fields are provided. And thus, uh, when the user wants to connect these kind of elements, um, he or she is provided with a direct feedback. And um, that's that's why we use that kind of description layer in the first place. Now coming to extending stream pipes. Um, so as mentioned, um, we've got various runtime options. So you can run standalone. We basically started out from using plain Java uh, processes. Um, we also got um, runtimes for city. And uh, now you can, you can follow the development of our new um, runtime option that we're currently working on with the Python wrapper to, to focus more on the data science community. But we also got uh, wrapper options for distributed um, runtimes such as Flink, Spark, or Kafka streams. Um, now coming to the demo itself. Um, so we got a MyCreta data processor, which is a really simplified data processor that uh, once connected, it does not have really um, uh, a requirement on the input data stream. So that's um, the requirements is any property, which means it does not have any. Um, it supports JSON um, format and, and Kafka as uh, the transport layer. And um, the user is required to put in um, a creating text such um, that it is rendered in the UI. Um, on, on this side, you can, you can see it. Um, and as an output strategy, we want to append this kind of creating message to the um, already existing um, event stream. And the application logic is uh, just written in a few lines of code. So we see here um, that the MyCreta implements, uh, uh, implements a certain interface, um, which is um, consisting of three methods. Uh, the on invocation, which um, is used to extract these kind of parameters, such as the creating itself. Um, then we got the on event, um, which is triggered basically on every event, uh, event that is received uh, by the transport layer. And um, here we just add um, the, the new field with the greeting that is received by um, the user. And we got the on detach, um, which we don't really use right here. So um, this could um, be used in cases where, for example, you use um, a database in the background and you establish a connection on the on invocation and um, you can stop this kind of connection and, and clean everything up here in the on detach. So everything's on GitHub. Um, the video is going to be on YouTube afterwards, so no um, worries about the links. And um, with that, I'm going to show you the SDK. Um, so I'm not going to go through the code. It's documented. It's basically just a cloned repository here. Already got the MyCreta. Um, processor running. Um, so it's running here in IntelliJ and uh, my Streampipes um, instance locally is running in Docker. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the UI in order to, 
to um, tell you um, how to install and extend um, a running a Streampipes cluster. So um, let's go back to the home screen. And let's say um, we're just currently working on this kind of uh, extension, the, the MyCreator extension. And for that, um, we started um, a first instance and um, we want to install it in, into, the, into the system. So therefore we can switch over to the install pipeline elements here. And what we're doing here is fetching all the available pipeline elements that are currently running or um, not yet installed. So um, we, we can go here and um, switch over to the available ones and, and reload the items. And we're querying right now the um, core of stream pipes, um, which is reaching out to, to all the, the endpoints. So we see here um, the MyCreta with its description, and we can simply install it. it takes a couple of seconds uh, for the um, description to load. So, okay, so five more minutes, I got the node. Gonna be okay. Uh, my MacBook is really running hot right now. to reload it first, let's try it again. So it seems like the demo gods are not with me this time. So um, I, gonna switch over to the um, GitHub repository that I was mentioning, um, where I got the description and a nice GIF um, that you can follow in order to get this um, setup working. And um, just stay here for a little, uh, because here we see um, like the last couple of, um, of points of this kind of demo where I attach this um, or add a new uh, visualization and see here the, the creating message. I'm gonna switch back time-wise um, to the presentation. Um, talking about the roadmap, um, we got a bunch of new features coming up. So quickly going over it, um, Python runtime wrapper was already mentioned. Um, we're working on edge deployments, um, like bringing more advanced deployment options, uh, options for various pipeline elements to um, the users. Um, we're working on not only being able to define pipelines by the uh, by the means of the pipeline editor, but creating them uh, from code itself, and uh, some other features about uh, failure handling, um, resiliency, and monitoring. Um, if you want to get involved, check out our issues on Chira, um, see our SIPs, our Streampipes improvement uh, proposals. Um, subscribe to the mailing list and Slack channel um, to get involved into the discussions and uh, just help us grow the community further. Um, just a small note, don't miss the next talk because it's going to be really awesome. It's, it's a talk uh, by Chris and Toddy and Philip um, talking about analyzing the industrial IoT data with PLC4X and stream pipes. So just um, stay there in the IoT track and don't miss out on it. And uh, with that, um, thank you very much. And um, I'm going to be in Slack and um, yeah, just reach out to me um, when whenever you feel like. I think we don't have time for too many questions because maybe it took me so long, but I'm going to go and stay here in the channel. Gonna try to go through the questions here. And if not, just um, just go out and, and reach out to me in, on Slack and
we can we can chat about stream pipes and uh, if you liked it um, please leave a star on github and um, thank you very much <laughs>